it's Liz with Fully Devoted. We are continuing our series on the fruit of the Spirit um, that's found in Galatians 5, 22 through 23. I'll read that for us real quick. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I get the privilege of bringing you the third fruit of the Spirit listed, which is peace, um, the first thing that I thought is what is the biblical definition of peace? Because we all know um, the definition that the world has of peace, which typically is just a lack of conflict or um, a lack of war. But the biblical definition of peace is so much more than that. According to the Strong's Hebrew Concordance, peace actually means completeness, soundness, welfare, safety, health, prosperity, quiet, tranquility, contentment, friendship, covenant relationship. It does mean a lack of war, but it also means favor. Biblical peace is so much more than a lack of conflict. In fact, biblical peace can be found in the midst of conflict. Look at the armor of God in Ephesians 6 for a moment. What's the point of armor? It's protective. Warriors don't wear armor every day unless they're in conflict or in battle. They, wear, they don't wear it to um, bed at night unless there is a current war going on. Um, but what type of peace would Ephesians 6 be talking about? In Ephesians 6.15 where it says, For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news, so that you will be fully prepared. Can you have peace in the middle of conflict? You most certainly can. In Mark 4, Jesus tells his disciples to head on over to the other side of Galilee. He climbs in the boat, grabs a pillow, and takes a nap. And he didn't just nod off. When Jesus went to sleep on the boat, he did so on purpose. And we know this because verse 38 says that he had a cushion. Jesus grabbed a pillow and moved to the back of the boat. And when you're stretched out and asleep with a pillow, you mean to be that way. Now the Sea of Galilee was infamous for tempest to flare. In the deepest dark of the night and in the middle of the sea, I'm sure the storm would have caught the disciples off guard. The storm tested not only their boating skills, but also their emotions. Tony says, Tony Evans says that it is precisely in these times when we feel so weak and helpless that Jesus' power is most visibly strong. God does some of his best work in these moments. We don't think he's working at all. Sometimes, God lets you hit rock bottom so that you will discover He is the rock at the bottom. Sometimes, God allows you to get in situations that only He can fix so that you can see Him fix it. Whatever the case is, you can trust His work is motivated by His heart of love for you. Read Romans 8.28 Jesus got up from His slumber and spoke to the sea. Silence! Be still. Two brief commands and the storm obeyed. The word for silence literally means hold your peace. Jesus told the storm to be quiet, to stop its noise, and to hush its fuss. Philippians 4 7 says that there is a peace that passes all understanding and that that will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. How can we have a peace that passes all understanding? I think it's found in verse 6 of Philippians 4. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all that He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that you can understand. His peace will guard your heart and your mind as you live in Christ Jesus. Prayer ushers in peace talking to God. Tell him not only what you need, but also thanking him for what he's done. Thanksgiving ushers in peace. 
When you have an attitude of gratitude, peace covers your heart. Why? Because gratitude fixes your eyes on the things that he has already done. And you're hopeful about the things that he will do. Gratitude reminds your soul how much God has been faithful before. How much he has done. And if he's done it once, he'll do it again. This guards your heart and your mind because your focus is not on you. This is how you can have peace in the midst of conflict. This is the peace that you carry with you daily, whether you tap into it or not. Um, it's readily available to you and I as believers. Our peace is not dependent on the world around us. It is not dependent on the people in our lives. Our peace is is only dependent on one person, and that is Christ. Ephesians 2.14 in the NIV says that Jesus is our peace. He has broken down every wall, every barrier, and brought unity. So choose to live in peace, walk in peace, and become people of peace. Hey, has this video or any of our previous videos made an impact or spoken to your heart in some way? Would you do us a favor and like, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel? Also visit us on our website at fullydevoted.net. You can see us on Facebook at Fully Devoted Ministry. And then also you can send us an email at fullydevotedld at gmail.com.